Teleo uh, moved in at Sam Watkins' house. I remember Solo Pepe. I don't can't remember his real name, but Solo Pepe was on the 15th Street corner of Coma Avenue. And I remember one day we had gone around the block, and when he came back, we saw this checkpoint at 15th Street and Coma Avenue. And he said, he said to me, you know, and I said, in other words, I don't know. You know, he was asking me for help, what was happening? And I said, you know, I, I didn't know. We found out that Tele had moved into Sam Walking Hall, which is on the corner of, of 15th Street and Coma Avenue. My house is on the corner of 14th Street and Coma Avenue, and my mother is next, next to me. And uh, before he moved in there, Maypi Green and her family were in there with Mother Kimba. And uh, anyway, that's a, another story. So, but that's where they were taken from. Then later on, we found out that uh, Solo Pepe, I think his mother-in-law must have been about 85, 90 or something like that. His mother-in-law, his wife, their whole family disappeared. Then later on, Maypie Green, her husband, their whole family disappeared. And the funny thing about it is, when I found out, I, when Maypie Green wasn't well, when I spoke to her, she said she wasn't feeling well, you know, and I had gone back home. And then when they said Mother Kimba had left, I went looking for her, and it was good I didn't find her. Because if I had found her, she would have been killed with my mother. And I remember also, uh, uh, what was her name? Samuels, Louise Samuels. She had gone, she had left her house, which is near um, where Via Statma, you know, uh, that, 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 that where Via Statma, where that place they have the school. No, JJ Rouse, but there's, a, there's an entity right there. Well, that, that trade place. That's a trade place, yeah, okay. She lives in that area, you know. And my mother was concerned about her. And she sent me, she said, look, go find your cousin Louise and tell her to come to me. Because, you know, we had food and things that, you know, we're giving people food and things like that, you know. So when I went to her, uh, and where my Dennis' wife? Ray and Dr. Dennis. Mm -hmm. Cecilia. Mm -hmm. Cecilia Dennis. They had a house on Payne Avenue in that area there, somewhere in that area. When I went there, I said, Master, I'm going to come get you so you can go to, go to her. She said, you know, I had a dream. And in the dream, my mother told me, when I move from where I am, don't go back to where, you know. And luckily again, she didn't, you know, she didn't come. The night that my mother was killed, okay, I would just go back in pieces. The night that my mother was killed, I remember... <coughs> We, uh, it was after, after a curfew time. And uh, by that time, Tilly had moved into Sam Watkins' house. And, <laughs> you know, the soldiers, the people came knocking on my mother's door. Open the door, open the door. And, you know, there was a fence. So I climbed over the fence and I went there and I said to, I said to them, I said, what happened? So one no go one way any rebels in this house here. I said, no rebel, how many persons say where there you know, few of us here. You know, and I started explaining what not. So we just want to know because I want to know if any of hosting any rebel. Mind you, these are people who have been living in that area now for I don't know how long. Anyway, they left. They came back later that night. The dogs in my yard was barking. But, you know, my little daughter, Andre, and that was my mother's favorite. So when I went to Cottonton, when I left the children, when I came back, my, she decided that she was going to stay, you know, at my mother's house, sleep there, you know, whatnot. And I remember telling her, Andre, if anything, get on your granny's bed, okay? If anything happened, go under the bed. And she said, okay, mommy. But before, before then, we started, we started putting things together just in case. And my mother said to me, she said, I'm trying to figure out where to put these things. And I took some of the papers, you know, important papers, I put it somewhere, you know, whatnot. And then she said, but Mokin, let me show you where I put my jewelry. I said, Mama, I said, that's all right. As long as you remember, you know, whatnot. 
Anyway, they came that night. When my mother didn't want to open the door, they started to bust from the back. And they started to bust from the back, and eventually she opened the door. She opened the door, and they went throughout the house. They went throughout the whole house. And there was a back room where, you know, we kept food also. And she managed to leave the keys where I would see it. But you know, that was the first time in my life that I ever figured out that if gunshot hit you, it had to kill you or hurt you badly. In the night, Taylor used to be playing her music. And you know, pitch black dark, when you, you, you saw fire in the air. I mean, and the thing was orange. When it go up a fire, you could see the orange light, you know. Anyway, they, they, they looted the house. What I did that night, I took my children, I packed up the money I had, their passports, everything else, and I carried them next to, next to me. And I told the boy, you know, if anything, try and get them out. The next morning, around about 5.30, something 5.30 that morning, I saw my mother, when they were carrying them, there was a group of them, they carried them out, and she flashed the flashlight back for them to see, because there was a low height for them to pass over. And they carried them. Around about 7 o'clock that morning, you could see from, because you know we had a business going there, interior decoration, you could see where pieces of fabric were all over the place. And I went over to Mark Richards' building, where they were. And I started telling them, what you did to my mother, blah, 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 and you know, what not. And the man said, oh, really? He said, okay, I'm coming. When he said, I'm coming, I took my children, and you know, behind there, we call it, there's a little bastard town right behind them. I carried them and I left them there. Then I decided that I was going to go in my mother's yard and hide there. But that night, I remember there was an army man who had a pharmacy right in the same area. And apparently my children were telling him, please go help our grandma. And he told, he said, the white people will go. He said, but they're not white people, so I'm not going. And there was a boy named Jerry. I can't remember his last name. And he was staying there to help us in case. But the funny thing, I thought about it later on, that night Jerry didn't come, which was very unusual. But I never thought about it. And then later on, this army man, Jerry came, and then Jerry told my daughter's father, who was in the army, what had happened. And then he came with guns and whatnot. And he said, OK, sis, he said, pack the things that you need. And my daughter was saying, mommy packed the, you know, and they put, you know, I was really in a daze. And I went over to my mother's house. When I went over to my mother's house. The only thing I took from there were pictures. The only thing I took from there were pictures. I just took them, you know, put them in pillowcases and whatnot, and we drove. We came down, we went to Center Street, and he said, we should go into the barracks with him. I said, no. I said, because I'm afraid. Everybody knows I'm Robert Phillips' sister. And he said, okay, where will you go? By that time now, Maureen Shaw had sent notes, you know, and uh, whatnot to say, we down, so, so please come on down and whatnot. So, I, drove, I left my patio, but I drove the Honda, and I went down. When I went down, you know, God is something. Though I say the 23rd Psalm is a powerful psalm. There was a boy at the checkpoint. And he said, oh, Reverend, how you doing? You know, remember from, from Cotton Town? I said, yeah, you know. And uh, after I left, he made some terrible remarks, you know. So my daughter's father didn't say anything. We went. We got to Marine Shore Place. I mean, got to uh, opposite that Johnson Place where they had the checkpoint before you start to go into the embassy uh, area. There's a big, I think it's a pinkish house now. That's where everybody was. So when I saw the crowd, I said, look, two things I want to go back tomorrow to find out what happened to my mother. And the way I see the crowd, we have a lot of food in Cinco, so I will go back and go get it. When we were coming down, we met one boy. One at that time, with Prince Johnson on that side and whatnot. He asked me what I was going to do and say, and I, I can't call the name, he called, he said, he said, but when you come back here, you come to me to Central Bank building. I said, all right. We went. 
we passed where JMAT is. We came up, we drove, and then uh, uh, my daughter's father met me at the gate. We went to the house and we picked up, you know, a lot of food, you know, rice, oil, blah, 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 and whatnot. And then they said that my mother was on 16th Street, the bodies were on 16th Street. That was never confirmed. Anyway, when we were going back, we got to J Mart, and this man came and stopped us. Where you're going? You know? And oh, he said, Come, come carry her to kill you. And the funny thing about it is, my daughter, the oldest one, has said she wanted to go with me. I said, No. You know, I said, I don't want to carry you. Anyway, I decided to carry her. We got down there, he got in the car, we started to, you know, negotiate and explain. I said, Well, I met this fellow so, so, so this morning, he can tell you that blah, 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 and whatnot, you know. And eventually, the other fellow who was there at the checkpoint there, he said, I know these people here. You know, he said, I know these people here. I said, he said, uh, then he started to explain the story. But then the man said, okay, you go. He told my daughter, he said, you don't come back here. He said, because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. 